Well, joining us uh, in studio now to discuss this further is analyst for gender and culture, Nomboniso Kasa. Uh, Nomboniso, a little bit earlier, I, I said it was a Monday. I think it just shows just how focused I am on this particular topic, very close to my heart. Uh, the Constitution of South Africa is founded on the values of non-racialism, non-sexism. Uh, by these comments that have been uh, leveled against uh, uh, Mazbuko, Lindue Mazbuko, uh, do you think that some of our parliamentarians have fallen short of upholding those values? I think so. I mean, I think that also uh, we are seeing increasingly in Parliament inability to debate, um, to, to, to have serious debate on issues um, and an attack on personalities. And I think what has happened with Lindo Mazibuko is also what has happened to so many other women, either in Parliament or, uh, or in the public domain in the media. You've had Ngosazana for years living with, um, uh, you know, with the label of wearing garish um, kaftans. You have um, comments about Ms. Mapisang Nagula and, and her weight and so on. But it has never actually happened inside Parliament. But I think that it, this shows um, that the parliamentarians are, are, are really uh, uncomfortable with women who, who are in leadership with, with a woman who's articulate. And it also shows the level at which the, 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 the public debate, or, or in fact, the absence of it, in, in Parliament. I mean, if you look at what Mr. Manamela said, um, it's, it's completely unacceptable, and there's just no way that you can try and explain that away. Uh, it's the same thing around the weight um, issue. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite disappointing, actually, you know, and, and it's not just the Constitution, it's also about rules of Parliament, about how people should engage in Parliament, and I think what we see is, is a very, very misogynistic uh, practice. Everybody's making a, a, a thing about Lindu uh, um, Mazibugo's skirt uh, being short in a society where women in public are being attacked by taxi drivers, in a society where women are being told um, how to dress and that they shouldn't dress uh, you know, in short skirts, otherwise they're asking to be raped. So, I mean, I think it's important for, for parliamentarians, particularly, to be very circumspect about how they speak. Uh, one school of thought would suggest that uh, her outfit was very unprofessional and inappropriate for Parliament. So I put it to you, uh, what do you think of that? Did she break whatever law, maybe perhaps a dress code for Parliament? And if so, did it warrant the backlash that she received? Well, I mean, firstly, Parliament doesn't actually have rules about what people should dress. And this is very interesting and uh, that it, this comes from ANC MPs. In 1994, uh, and I'd like to, I would like to urge uh, Deputy Minister Manamela to go and look at those records. In 1994, 1995, the Rules Committee in Parliament went through a very vigorous process, uh, and, uh, so a rigorous process to try and, and look at how to make Parliament a place where people of different cultures, people of different sizes, even um, accents and dress uh, interests can, 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 can feel comfortable. So what you find here is a complete disregard of, 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 of those um, kinds of processes that were embarked on um, earlier to try and transform parliament. And frankly, if um, Lindo Mazibugo's skirt is bothering Budimana Mela, the issue then is that Budimana Mela must ask himself why Lindo's skirt is, is an issue. Uh, President Jacob Zuma lambasted opposition MPs saying that uh, their criticism of the government is unjust and the way in which they go about criticizing the government is very untoward. Uh, he did not say anything with regards to the comments made by his own MPs, especially with regards to this issue of alleged sexism against Lindy and Mazibuko, especially in the light of we have female MPs. You touched on a few of them who are plus size, if I can call them that. We also have the president's own wives who, who are full of figured. What should should have been done to try and address that. I think it's something that that, that shouldn't be. It's a non-issue how big a person is. It, it has nothing to do with the merits of, of Lindu and Mazibuko. What do you think should be done to have, to have address those comments? You see, I mean, even the way you frame in the question, I have problems with it and I refuse to answer it. You know, I don't want this thing of examples of this woman is plus sized and that woman is plus sized and why this woman and this woman is is minus sized and so on. So we shouldn't even have this conversation. I but I think, to, I no, 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 no. Because I, it no, was an issue in yeah. Parliament that yeah. they were debating over. Yeah, but Manuela brought it up. It's got nothing to do yeah. with no, whatever no, no. merits of yeah. the comments no, I'm that coming, I'm coming to that. I'm mm. coming to that. So I'm thinking that there is a discourse that has developed in South African Parliament and in the politics of this country where women have got to justify their presence in Parliament. So, and, and, and I'm saying what has happened 
is to remind Lindiwe that you don't belong here. And if we cannot have an, uh, if we can't take the content of what you are saying, then we will attack you on the person. Interestingly, interestingly, the NC has lost a very important opportunity here because I think that they could have challenged Lindiwe Mazibuko's presentation, I mean, her, her, her speech. And, and I think they could have challenged it on very solid ground. But frankly, also what you do find is an affirmation of what we have been saying all along, that women's bodies in this country are battlefields. And that's what uh, Jeffries and that was what Putimana Mel have done in our parliament. They have made this woman's body to be a battlefield, and that is not acceptable. Just to wrap up, Nomboni, so do you think that uh, <coughs> South African <coughs> women still have to fight harder to gain respect in the political sphere? They not only have to worry about what they say and what they do, but also about how they appear. Well, I think women all over the world still have to fight harder, and I think it's absolutely disappointing that in South Africa, in 2013 in particular, we have these kinds of conversations. I think we have gone so many years um, backwards. And I think Parliament really needs to reflect on how it wants to be an institution of public representatives. Because if this is the kind of public representation that they do, I'm afraid, uh, particularly the ruling party, I'm afraid that they are undermining the very values that they've been sought to uphold. I also think that the level of polarization, the level of polarization between ruling party and opposition has gotten to such a level where it is unconstructive, where it is destructive, and, and we lose the conversation. But I want to end by saying at the core of it, even that polarization gets played on women's bodies. We'll have to leave it there. Always appreciate your insights. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Analyst for Gender and Culture, Numbuniso Ukasa. News that moves. ENCA.com.